Lauren Lee Smith. Hello. How are you? I'm so great, thank you. It's How nice to doing? see you. Well, I, I know you from the show, and then when you sat down, I said, oh yeah. my God, you were in The Shape of Water yeah. too. Yeah. Oscar-winning film. I know, right? It's pretty cool. Pretty it's pretty cool. Forever I can say that. I was in an Oscar-winning film. Oh, you'll be able to say that again. You'll be able to say that again. <laughs> so this show, this show is set in the 1920s, uh, uh, or at least like a fantasy version mm -hmm. of, of the 20s uh, with speakeasies and jazz clubs and old factories. What, what do you love about going back to that time? I mean, it's such a aesthetically it's so incredibly beautiful um, but there's just so many aspects uh, especially sort of you know for for women it was this time where you know women uh, because of their their efforts during the war now there's this like kind of newfound respect and this new sort of this fight for freedom and and sexuality and uh, and women's rights so it was a really it's really fun to sort of get to play in that era especially you know b because of that well you were joking around a little bit and we were saying that you sound kind of badass you maybe sound so badass in this and as much as you are kind of this you know this old time 20s detective it is you are kind of it's right? pretty cool yeah no i mean frankie drake is you know she's a, a whiskey drinking uh, she, you know, she she throws punches. She rides a motorcycle. She she started her own business as a private detective. Right. She sort of does everything, uh, you know, against the rules, which is is pretty cool. And the relationship with the mother, which we just heard, tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah. So in season one, uh, Frankie's mom shows up after after you know not being in Frankie's life since she was I think three or four years old, and and. Uh, she surprises Frankie and shows up, and and we discover each other, and and uh, it sort of throws Frankie for a tailspin because she was under the impression that her mother had passed away her whole life. Um, so now her mother is, comes back into her life, tries to to do all of the mom things that Frankie, you know, has never had or, mm -hmm. or been a part of, and uh, and she's not used to being told what to do or how to do it, and especially by mom. So it creates a very sort of volatile, interesting tumultuous relationship between the two of them. Wendy Crewson plays the mom. She does. I know her from, and I know, I, we, we were looking through her credits yesterday, and uh, the producers of the show were laughing at me because I, I was excited that she was in The Santa Claus. Yes. That, that, shit, that movie with Tim Allen. Yes, she was. And they were like, you know what else she was in? I was like, I don't care. She's done so much, but she was in The Santa Claus. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's true. <laughs> what it's was true. How do you find working with her? Wendy Crewson is, is such a dream. Um, I adore working with Wendy. She is she brings so much to this character and like that's all Wendy man she she came to the plate with so many ideas for this character and she just it's it's amazing I think originally uh, she was supposed to be in like one or two episodes and she just blew everyone away so mm. we try to get her for as much as we possibly can but the chemistry between her and I is also really fun we end up um, shooting all of our scenes usually in like one take and in oneers which is Pretty abnormal, Wonders? yeah. Like what does that mean? it means where the you know uh, there's no coverage. We do the entire I'm entire such a, I, scene I, I, on this Steadicam. This is a radio show. I am so I do not know anything <laughs> about this. So usually you have to do you know a scene like eight times. There's like the master and then a little bit closer. Okay, and then so close you do ups. it and they and they and they shoot you from different angles. Exactly. Every actor listening to the radio right now is smacking their heads, no, no, going, no, no. "How do you it's not know good. this, Tom?" It's, anyway, go on, go on. So so a wonder is where the you you have a steady cam which mm -hmm. just follows you around and we'll do like a five page scene in in one shot in one consecutive shot where they just follow us around because the banter is so quick. Mm -hmm. um, and it just sort of keeps the energy up in the scene. So it's really fun with her and I. We always are like, okay, we better run run these lines because we know we're going to have like one shot at this. <laughs> well, the, the fun is a word you keep on using over and over again. And I think it's mm. important to notice. We had Josh Groban in yesterday who's in this yeah. new um, – that will be airing next week. But he had this – he has this new show called The Good Cop. Okay. And one of the things he said to me, he said, you know, Tom, in a time of like – uh, you know, to, everything is so gritty and everything is so dark and everything is so depressing, especially when it comes to crime dramas. He said, I just wanted to have something lighter, something that kind of wraps up the end of the episode. And I, I don't want to say that the show, your show is incredibly light because it, it does talk about some real stuff, but yeah. it, there is something kind of nice about that, right? Absolutely, absolutely. That was a huge draw for me with this show. Um, you know, I, I've spent quite a lot of my career doing sort of like the heavy, heavy stuff and wanting to play really dark characters. And, and this was just sort of a, a time in my life where I just... I, I have a child now. I want to watch something light. I want to be entertained for an hour. I want to be sort of transported and, and not taken into a dark world all the time. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And mm -hmm. that's that's one of the things about our show that I think is so great is that you can sit down, you can watch it with your family, you can watch it with your kids, you can watch it with anyone and just sort of you know what you're going to get in the sense that there is a procedural aspect. We have a, a mystery to solve at the end of every episode. But there's just, it's fun. It's lighthearted. It looks beautiful and we don't take ourselves too seriously. So uh, I want to listen to a couple of these roles you've had in the past. Seven cases. Who knows how many more he never surfaced in. 
Records just have him as an unpaid informant. I mean, there's nothing to say what he was bringing to the party. I want to know if this guy's the real deal or if he's up to something. Lynn, do you recognize that? I only recognize that because of my dear friend Rainbow Sun Franks. I Former his, Much Music VJ Rainbow right, Sun Franks. That's right, his voice. I know, so that was The Listener. You played Sergeant Michelle McCluskey on The Listener. Uh, again, a high profile case, homicide, suspicious arm dealings, uh, arms dealing, not yeah. arm dealing, which is a completely different thing. <laughs> uh, before that, you played Riley Adams on CSI for a couple of years. Why do you think you keep on getting cast as a crime fighter? Dude, I have been asking this question to myself for a very long time. I have no idea. I have no idea. Is that something you are interested in outside, like you're not secretly solving cases? Maybe, maybe in my like right. subconscious. I don't know, maybe I go to sleep at night and this is what I do. Um, no, I've, I've really lucked out with the whole sort of getting to play these like badass female detective cop characters. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. You like it? I do, I do like it. Um, you know, it's fun to, to not be this sort of sidekick, which we see often with, with women or sort of like the girlfriend character or um, the, the token female. Um, it's, it's fun to, to get to play away, to, to not be that and play far away from that. I bet there's an added challenge, because I think uh, people like me might think that, look, okay, a show like CSI, it's a little bit darker, it's a little, it must be a little bit harder, Frankie Drake's a little bit lighter, it must be a little bit easier, but I bet that's not the case. It's not really, because it's such, you know, altered reality. You know, you show up on set, and and most of the time, it's, it's just fun, silly actors around and crew who are also, you know, we're all just kids kind right. of going, you know, showing up to work and, and playing make-believe, really, at the end of the day. So even if it is heavier, darker material, it, it's still pretty lighthearted. So Lauren Lee Smith, um, since you've obviously played so many detectives over the years, mm -hmm. uh, so many super sleuths <laughs> over the years, we figured we'd, we'd test your sleuth abilities. Oh, dear. So I have, I have a list of mysteries. I'm going to read you a couple. I'm going to get you to read a couple as well. You ready? Okay, yes. Ready? I don't know if this is going to work. Oh, no. I don't know if this is going to work. Let's try it. Let's try it. Ready? <laughs> what do you call an alligator in a vest? An investigator. Oh, my gosh. Oh what do you think? God. Oh, my God. No. So I want to point out that we didn't think this was going to work, so we had a laugh track made. Just in case. Can I hear the laugh track again? <laughs> Pretty good. That was smart to get the laugh we track also have. We also have crickets. Can I hear the crickets? Okay, good. Also good. So I'm going to get you to read one. Read that first one right okay. there. Okay. Uh, why did the burglar wear blue gloves? Why? He didn't want to get caught red-handed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I like how they found a laugh track of about 13 people There's laughing. Like, they're like, ah. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's how the listening uh -huh. audience feels right now. Uh -huh. How about this one? Did you hear about the crook who stole a calendar? I did not. He got 12 months. Oh. Didn't didn't go over so well. It didn't go over so okay, you're no. you're up. Okay, okay, okay. On which show do detectives solve crimes committed by lawn gnomes? What one? Law and order. Law and <laughs> ah, law and order. That gets a laugh? Really? <laughs> that was my favorite one. That was your favorite. All right. One more. What happened to the robber who stole a lamp? He got a light sentence. <laughs> I actually like that one. You like that one? I like that one. Can we switch one. it to a laugh track? Hold no. on. Oh, yeah, there oh, it is. Okay, good, good, good. Uh, it, well, there's pretty good. You did, you did well. I think we solved a couple of, I think we solved a couple we, of mysteries. We solved some mysteries. Um, so Frank and Drake Mysteries back from season two. What can you tell us about season two that maybe we didn't get from season one? I think season two, we... Um, the the friendship and the partnership between the the women this season is really heightened, which is lovely. And um, and I just I keep saying this, I'm going to say it again. But to me, like season two is sort of we have this female Indiana Jones vibe, which I think is really awesome. And female Indiana Jones vibe. What yeah, do you mean? it's just really, we've got like a lot of action, adventure, um, and all the girls are all kicking butt, and it's just yeah. I don't know. You know, Indiana Jones has that sort of like adventure vibe. I feel like we sort of carry that through throughout season two a little bit. Well, it's nice meeting you. Yeah, nice meeting you too. Thanks for playing along with the jokes. It was uh, fun. <laughs> I don't know if you know, but that Lauren Lee, uh, Lauren Lee Smith just uh, described how people describe this show. It was uh, fun. It was fun. These jokes were great. Thank you very much. I didn't write any of them.